But now in this video, we're going to take a quick look at a relay. So this is a double pull, double throw. There's a switch on each side. That is the double pull and then double throw. There's two positions for that switch. So right now we're in the resting position where this LED is on. And then we'll move over here. I have this jumper to the positive supply. And when I give a voltage to the coil in there, now it uh, switched. So I have to keep the voltage across that coil, keep current uh, flowing through it to keep it in that state. If I remove this, then it flips back. So that is why it is non-latching. Latching relays, they have a couple coils. You use one to flip it in one state and then one to flip it in the other state. Once you flip it, you can just let go and uh, it'll stay in whichever state it was before. This one we have to keep applying power. Now it is 12 volts. That is for the coil. So if you see the uh, specs written like that, that's what it means. Also, nice thing about relays is they tend to have this information on there. So we have, zoomed a little too close, we have DC 12 volts right there. That is for the relay. Up here, this is for the switches. So it says five amps at 240 volts. So that's the maximum you'd want to do that's alternating current. When it comes to direct current, you want to limit it to about 30 volts right there or intermittent uh, voltages. But still, you can do five amps, but limit to uh, 30 volts uh, DC right there. So there's a couple of them. I got this from the Make Electronics Kit. It has uh, nice labeling on it, but it's probably overpriced and uh, hard to find now. So uh, you'd have to get these somewhere else probably. And so zooming back, you can see the uh, power supply. We're applying 12 volts, as I said before. So now we can see uh, somewhere around 20 milliamps. This isn't completely accurate, but it's usually really close. And that is the two LEDs. If I pluck the uh, resistors, which are hot, but uh, now you can see that the LEDs went out. And they should, uh, I'm halfway blind looking there. Turn back on when I wire them back. There we go. So. Right now, that is the current. When I switch it, now we have the LEDs on, which are gonna have less current, but the coil has current flowing through it. So those two LEDs are on, and I know they got less current going through them because they're green LEDs. They block more voltage. They have the same resistor protecting them. They're 1,000 ohm resistors. And there you can see how much current the coil needs when uh, we use a power supply that shows the current like that. So now we have that current flowing. Let's uh, unplug this. You see we have a diode. As I said before, that is a coil. So when I apply power, so I'll do that again, and it switches. Right now current, we're gonna go positive to negative right there, is flowing through the coil. So also attached to the coil, I have this diode, rectifier diode. There's the cathode there towards the more positive supply the anode towards the more negative side. That means the diode's not conducting. It's blocking uh, the voltage and current. That all is going through the coil there. When I release this, the coil doesn't want to stop conducting right away. And so this gives it a path to uh, keep conducting until it runs out of energy. Its magnetic field collapses. And now we'll zoom in, cut the uh, power, and look at the pins. So the pins are like that pretty straightforward. All the relays I got, if the ones where they're all bunched up, that's the switching part. The middle is either connected there or there. So there when the power's off, there when it's on. Same for this one over here. When it's off, when it's on, it makes that connection. And on the breadboard, there's one spot in between those. So you can see where I got the resistors. I got the LEDs one spot away right there. And the very bottom for this particular one has the pins right there. So as long as you said it right. Now of course the uh, green LEDs I got more negative up here and so that's the shorter lead the cathode on top of the longer lead the anode. That's usually the opposite of how I usually have it but uh, that's where negative is so I have to. Here negative is down lower for the red LED so I have the cathode down there the anode up there. So really that's about it for this component. Pretty straightforward and they're really nice. You got a mechanical switch that you control electrically and so tons of uses they're all over the place not that hard to use and uh, so we're gonna end the video there thanks for watching make sure you watch one of the other 
uh, videos I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell. Donate to Patreon if you can, that helps out the most. I have links down in the description, but watching as many videos as you can helps out a ton. I appreciate everybody that does that. I'll see you in the next video.